Hi, and welcome back to Gage Show Crafts. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rick. And today we're going to talk about decorating for the holidays. Uh, it's December. Happy December, everybody. And uh... <laughs> We're a bit behind. I'm, I think that December kind of snuck up on us. This uh, weather mm -hmm. that we've had, which is very not December, lots of snow, is kind of throw me off. Um, we normally do our tree and trimming of the tree uh, the day after the Thanksgiving weekend. I did put the tree up for the weekend, but the trimming is being reserved for today. Yeah. So we're about to um, bust out our ornament collection, uh, but we're going to talk about it a little bit because we have a lot of um, special memories and, uh, and handmade stuff. So where would you like to start? Can you start over there? Well, yeah, let's start over here. So um, obviously a lot of the decorations that one accumulates usually starts with your childhood, depending, again, what your upbringing was. Mm -hmm. So we have a kind of a mixture of things here from when we were mm -hmm. kids, as well as things that we've accumulated or collected on our travels. So we often, if we visit a place and we find an interesting ornament, that is representative of that trip. It is helpful for us to buy it and then put it in a trip because when we trim the tree and break down the tree, we're constantly reminded of these wonderful events in our lives. Yeah. And, so, uh, and we have a lot more than we're going to be able to show you today. But, but we might not even get through what we this have. Is a, this is a smattering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's matter. So, so we started let's with... start with your childhood stuff. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, my uh, mother uh, used to was very obviously very big into Christmas. And uh, when I was a kid, we would have lots of different little things to put on the tree. Um, but I want to speak with about specifically these crystal ornaments that are truly heirloom. Um, that are glass and they have a bunch of things. There's a candy cane and there is a, a cross and there's a nativity scene and there's all sorts of different right. things. We don't put all of those up, but I always want to put the boot. Right, because Rick's family, in case you didn't know, he's half Italian. Um, his mother and, and father were, well, his mother and her whole family is, is Italian, so... So I'm not sure why these were end up in this collection, but in Italian families, often a boot is representative of Italy because it looks like Italy. In I wonder if that's meant to be like your stocking. I was the, only thinking of... It's only okay. taking me 50 years, but I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like a stocking because it has a sole on it and a heel. Oh yeah, it's got a heel. See, that's got there. But anyway, I always, it may be a stocking, but you know, we maybe conflate that and we make it that it is something for Italy. So mm -hmm. that is one of the things I always put up and I always recall my mother when I do so. So as we were talking about my mother, I'm going to say about my father. So this is a glass Santa that uh, was meant to purchase as a replacement for a Santa that I accidentally broke when I was a wee lad. Um, was lifting it by this part above the uh, fireplace at my house and it broke and it was very upsetting mm -hmm. to me. My father was very, very kind about that. I'm sure it was probably a challenge for him, but I appreciate it. So this was bought as a replacement and now I think of my father, sweet old Bob, when we put <laughs> this on the tree. That's right. Yeah. So, and then you have a new collection started, um, oh, and this right. takes various forms. So Rick um, attended the University of Maryland, go Terps, <laughs> and, and has also been a fan of the Grateful Dead, and they have the song Terrapin Station. So turtles have been playing a big part in our lives yeah, I'll show you one of those, yeah. for a number of years, yeah. um, but this is one I got him. He's also got, you know, miniature figures and... Uh, oh, yeah. Another thing we collect whenever you go rugs. somewhere. Rugs. We'll also like handmade rugs, like um, tatted rugs that have turtles on them and that kind of thing. Not tatted. Uh, what am I thinking They're of? Hooked. hooked. And that's big seeks well about yes. that. So we have a friend who is, uh, we will show you something that was made by that uh, person as well. So anyway, yeah. as to, you know, you might find it sometimes you feel like you collect things, but it may not be things that you've decided you collected. And so maybe you can hold up one of those. So my mm -hmm. mother... Um, always had owls in the house. And I think it was yeah. one of those things where she accidentally started collecting them. So so this one is... That's a shrinky made, dink. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you guys remember shrinky dinks? You put the little beads in and cook them in the oven at a low temperature. Yeah. So my cousins, who I always spent the, uh, Christmas with, and I would always make these shrinky dink different things. And this one is the one that I still have 40-something years later, uh, and again, it's a reminder of my mother. So all things owls uh, were she was collecting them, whether she wanted to or not, because other people would buy them, and so we have And now we have owls, owls, too. Owls. Yeah, so. and this one was made, this is a amigurumi crochet style and was made by my friend Adrian, so thank you, Adrian. I like the little bells, because if we, if we sort of tromp past the tree, the owl will <laughs> shake and... Yeah. 
So I was saying, I was kind of bringing those together. So my mother collected owls, perhaps, and I collect turtles somewhat accidentally as well. So, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's something that we collect together. Yeah. Um, let's see. Speaking of collecting, we started our collection. We um, we met in Washington D.C. area, and that's where we got married. Um, and we were first living near Tacoma Park, Maryland. And this um, gourd, it's a hand painted, decorated gourd. Um, we got it at the farmer's market down there. And I just love this. I love the gold on there. The flowers are really beautiful. And the colors, that teal is just lovely. Well, it's a gourd, but I believe it's also designed to look like a pear, which is often something, a fruit that would be given oh, at course. Christmas. Partridge in a pear tree, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. That, that so yeah, it's nice. kind of representative of our first Christmas together. Mm -hmm. So what and else do we have here in front of you? Some early ones from our um, coming to Vermont then. So this is made by our friend uh, Janet Zook, and I interviewed her um, a few weeks ago. You can uh, look back in our video feed um, to find that interview, but she's a glass blower, and I just love this, the way the, the glass kind of swirls around there. Yeah. This one, again, is great for the tree. It catches the light really nicely when you walk past. Yeah, I love that one. It's great. Um, and then also glass, and I and I forgive me because I don't remember exactly where we got this one, but we have oh, I love that one. this stamped glass sheep. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And of course, being shepherds and fiber people, um, we have a lot of sheep. So you want to show some more of these? Sure. So this is a couple of sheep that my mother-in-law Nancy got for us, and of course, I'm always a black sheep in my family, so it's perfectly <laughs> representative there. So we have the two sheep that Nancy gave us. And yeah. Then why don't you talk about that one? And then. Um, one of my mom's best friends from South Carolina, um, where she was living before she moved back to Vermont, uh, Miriam gave us this a few years ago. And it must be from, oh, it says handmade in Germany. So it's Steinbach is oh, the company, nice. I believe. There's the little label. Um, and it's so cute. Yeah. It's like a, a Hampshire type sheep because it's got black appendages and then a white fleece. Um, and the little hearts on the front. So if you're watching Miriam and Phil, thank you very much. Yes, it is a big you. part of our Christmas tree. And this one's nice, too, because it stands up on its own, so you can use it as a tabletop yeah. ornament as well. Yeah. Um, and then some more handmade ones. This was an also an early Vermont acquisition, <laughs> and it's looking a little worse for wear. Um, but I think this is great. If you're looking for homemade ornaments, so this is a little wreath. And it's got puzzle pieces on it. You can see on the back, they didn't paint the back. So you can see some of the original puzzle. But if you do puzzles and then you don't know what to do with them after you've finished. <laughs> or perhaps you have a puzzles that have a lot of pieces missing. And this would be a great project for kids. Right, exactly. So it's just, I think it's just, you know, a backer in a ring shape. And then a hot glue gun and use your creativity. I need to re-glue some of these plastic beads back on here. Yeah. Um, but that, that's another one. We got this at a one of those second-hand stores where you can get furniture, clothing, uh, right. kitchenware, that kind of stuff. Right, I forgot um, about that. Yeah, and they just had like a box of Christmas stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so this was in there, and that reminds me of the, the first year we yeah. were in Vermont. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. You've got another Vermont one? Oh, yeah. Speaking of Vermont, uh, you might see this lovely moose. We got this at Woodstock uh, at the Apple and Crafts uh, Festival that uh, we had vended at. Um, there was a gentleman who was makes these and sells these. And mm -hmm. I love, again, nice wooden, beautifully handcrafted. I love the contrast of the two woods. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of those wooden toys, old fashioned wooden toys that you would get as a kid. Now I keep hearing the Northern Exposure theme when I hear do, 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 do. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the moose. you gotta have a moose if you're in Vermont. Yeah. It might be a more of a Mainer thing, but that's okay. Quite right, possible. Um, and then speaking of handmade, um, we have this, and she's not she's not an ornament that goes on the tree, but she comes out at Christmas because she has her beautiful formal uh, gear on. So my friend Giselle, um, who's in our fiber group, she makes um, knitted and crocheted dollies, finger puppets, um, all kinds of things, and she also does the hooked rugs. Um, and she's she's a real masterwork. I just love that she gets so much character and expression on the faces. Um, you know, the placement of a single stitch of yarn can really change the expression. Mm -hmm. um, and so it looks a bit moody. I like that she used, chose different yarns that helped kind of the, uh, define the, the doll. So you can see right. there's a lot of hair in the fiber that was used for her hair. Yeah, that's a boucle mohair. So it's like nice and fuzzy. It's got natural curls in it. And then she's got like... Um, like eye makeup or or like just eyelashes there and her lipstick. I mean, 
It's beautiful. Again, just a quick touch of a couple of details, and it really brings out the personality of them. So she's she sits elegantly in the window next to our tree. Right. So, and that's what we're mostly getting at. There's these are great things if you're a knitter, a crafter of any sort. Mm -hmm. Make your own ornaments. A lot of these things Absolutely. that you see in stores today are made in China, are made elsewhere, mm -hmm. and they just don't have the sentimentality and right. the wonderful feeling of Christmas or holidays. Absolutely. I mean, even this. I know this was purchased. But, you know, you could easily make something like this at home. Cut out some felt if you have those um, crinkle cut scissors that will do like a zigzag cut. Uh -huh. And then it just is two pieces of felt hand stitched together with a little stuffing. And then another piece of felt that's a single piece that yeah. goes from the ear around the face to the other ear and a couple of beads. I mean, that would take yeah. you, what, an hour or something to make yeah. something like that. So even though that one's store-bought, it does look handmade. Yeah. Um, and then also on handmade, this would be a little more time consuming. Oh, this is from Susie of the Felted Gnome. Again, I interviewed her last year. And so you can find her interview in our video feed. Um, this is a cardinal. And this is one that even though it's not from my childhood, it reminds me of my childhood because my grandfather loved cardinals. We would always feed the cardinals and um, look for them. So this reminds me of him. Yeah, yeah. and there's something about cardinals are always kind of a, a symbol of the the winter holiday season sure having it uh, you know you're lovely to see that red uh, kind of contrast against the snow and the gray mm -hmm. what a beautiful bird yeah we do see them in the area but they, we don't seem to get cardinals at our feeder and i don't know why yeah. seen them once <laughs> yeah but i do see them flying across the road so they are in the area They're but around, we might yeah. be just a bit exposed yeah who knows goals <laughs> yeah attract some cardinals um, and then the last one I, I picked out to show um, is a little crochet butterfly. So this one has another story to it, which is that a few years after uh, my mother moved up um, to join us here on the farm, um, we got a commission from our local library. They do a um, Kids with Santa afternoon every December, so children can come in and talk to Santa. Um, he's the town historian. Shh. Um, shh. <laughs> and his wife plays Mrs. Claus. It's a hoot. Um, but when they, when they come to visit Santa, the kids were always getting some kind of a handmade ornament. It might be cut out paper. It might be something that was knit or crocheted. Um, it could be a felted something, um, different styles of handmade ornaments. The woman who had been making them for decades was getting um, very elderly. I think she was in her 90s when she relinquished her crown <laughs> as ornament lady. Um, and so my mom and I have kind of picked up the gauntlet along with some of our other fiber friends who have been helping us. And this was a design we did a few years ago. So they're little butterflies. And I like that they're, you know, they're not tied to particular faith or anything. They're just beautiful and ornamental. And this is very easy. So if you can see, this is a crocheted circle. And then it's just gathered up and joined with a pipe cleaner. Yeah. And this is great for a holiday thing, everything. But again, it doesn't have to be secular. Right. It doesn't have to be part of a, a particular holiday. It's a great project for kids. They can be hung in the window. You can create a, a right. bunch of them together. Sure. And you could you could create a little flock of butterflies and hang them anywhere any time of year, I think. Um, but it's a great way to use up scrap yarn, or this is a, a wildly variegated um, yarn. And sometimes you buy those skeins, and then you're like, wow, this has so many colors in it. I don't know if I'd actually wear it use it up in making colorful ornaments. And again, this is another fun project you can do with the kids. Yeah. Um, it's a, I mean, I don't crochet. This is very challenging for me, but with somebody with the, the skills that said mm -hmm. it, uh, I think you were able to teach people to do it quite easily. I was, and even as a non-seasoned crocheter myself, I was able to pick this up pretty quickly. Crochet was something I did a little bit as a kid. Um, I made a few granny squares, a few pot holders. And then kind of put it down but this is very simple so i'm going to put the pattern for this online for free um and you can make your own butterfly ornaments so yeah. and if you yeah. make some share them absolutely put up a picture or, or post a link um in the youtube comments box below we'd love to we'd love to see those um also if you have any suggestions on you know free patterns online for making ornaments feel free to let us know we'd be happy to to see those we're always looking um with this you know, ornament thing that we do every year now. We're always looking for something new to make because you get bored making the same thing year after year. So, um, so let us know if you have a favorite quick ornament. Um, my my thing is, you know, if I can make it in 20 minutes, then I can crank out a whole bunch, and that's nice to mm. to give away. And yeah, even if you don't make your own ornaments, share with us if you have something that's uh, reminiscent of your childhood or something that brings mm -hmm. you joy. Take your a photo of yourself. Or yeah, your exactly. travels or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Something has a special meaning to you. Take a photo of it and share it with us. We'd mm -hmm. love to see it. It would make us happy too. Yeah. 
Absolutely. So I hope that was fun for you guys. Um, like I said, I'll post some, some links to some uh, ornaments that you can make yourself. And um, we'll have some ornaments on this tree that's behind us pretty soon. Maybe we'll have a photo after it's up. Dolled up. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll post the photo in the video. So thanks again for joining us. Um, happy making and happy holiday prep. I um, hope it's fun for you and not too stressful. And uh, we'll be back next week um, with more something. something. <laughs> we'll have something for you next we'll week. We'll have something for yeah. you next week. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks.